In this video, I'm going to speak to some of the concepts and terms associated with a basic mediation analysis. And I want to say at the outset, the analysis that I'm describing here can be carried out with just about any popular statistical software like SPSS, so you don't need specialist software. And I mention this because I'm going to show you what mediation modeling looks like visually, which might lead you to think that you need additional software like AMOS for structural equation modeling. That's not true. I'm showing you the concepts and terms associated with a basic mediation analysis that can be conducted in SPSS. The other thing I'm going to mention is that I'm going to be talking about mediation analysis in a generic way. I'm not showing an example in this video. I strongly encourage you to carry on with the textbook and look at the example I provide as well as the video in which I go through the steps involved with actually doing a mediation analysis with real data. So with that said, Mediation, what is the purpose? The purpose of mediation is to determine whether the effect between one variable and another is due in part or in full to a third variable. So there's an important third variable included in a mediation analysis and it's hypothesized to do something. And it's hypothesized to mediate the effect between one variable and another, either partly or fully. So let's think about this in more operational terms where in regression we talk about an independent variable symbolized by x and we talk about dependent variables symbolized by y and this is a common representation of variables in regression. Now the new variable is the mediator. That's the third variable. It's a hypothesized mediator and that's symbolized with the letter m. So with these symbols in mind, the purpose of mediation is to determine whether the effect between x and y, the independent variable and the dependent variable, is due in part or in full to a third variable, which is that mediator variable. So to carry on with an insightful discussion of mediation, there are really only five key terms that you need to keep in mind. And if you have these terms understood, then you can have an intelligent conversation with somebody about mediation, and you can also potentially carry out a mediation analysis in an insightful way. And the first term is total effect. And I'm going to show you what a total effect is in a minute. I'm just going through the list. The second one is a direct effect. And the third effect is an indirect effect. So in any mediation analysis, you should be speaking about a total effect, a direct effect, and an indirect effect. Now, whether the direct effect or the indirect effect is statistically significant or not is the purpose of conducting the mediation analysis in operational terms. But for the purposes of discussion here, I'm just going to say that any mediation analysis has some reference to a total effect, a direct effect, and an indirect effect. Now, in addition to the effects, we also speak about full mediation and partial mediation. And the nature of your results will inform you whether you have data consistent with full mediation or partial mediation. So those are the five terms that you have to know in order to conduct a mediation analysis in an insightful way. So what is a total effect exactly? Well, you actually already know what a total effect is. It represents the bivariate association between x and y. It's a simple bivariate regression analysis. It's that standardized or unstandardized beta weight you get from a regression analysis. And in modeling terms, again, within SPSS or another program, in modeling terms, this is what a bivariate regression looks like. We have x predicting y. The independent variable predicts the dependent variable. And then we have a residual here because in practice the independent variable rarely ever predicts the dependent variable with full accuracy. There's some residual unexplained variance associated with a bivariate regression. In mediation, we refer to this association as the total effect. It's the association between x and y. The mediator hasn't even been introduced yet. It's just the first step of conducting the mediation analysis. I write here the total effect must be observed to be statistically significant in order to conduct a mediation analysis. Now this is a bit of a controversial statement and you can read material in the literature that suggests that this is not true but I think it's a misunderstanding. In order to conduct a mediation analysis you definitely need to see a total effect to be statistically significant. Otherwise, there's nothing to mediate. If the association between x and y is non-significant, 
The association between X and Y can't be due to a third variable, right? The mediator. I think where the confusion comes from is that you can carry on with the procedure of a mediation analysis without a significant total effect and uncover something interesting. But what you're uncovering is not mediation. What you might uncover is suppression, which is theoretically distinct from mediation. They're actually quite different. And I talk about suppression later on in a textbook, and I encourage you to check that out if you're interested. So technically, yes, you can carry on with the procedure, the steps associated with a mediation analysis in the absence of a total effect. You don't need a significant one. You can carry on with the steps. But what you're going to uncover is not mediation. You might uncover suppression. You might also uncover something like a total indirect effect, which is, again, not mediation. In summary, you need to observe a total effect in order to conduct a mediation analysis. Now this is what a mediation model looks like. I've already shown you the total effect, which corresponded only to these terms here. That was the total effect. But now I've introduced the mediator. And the mediator is the third variable. And it's also known as an intermediary variable because it's operating in between the independent variable and the dependent variable. So I have a regression line going from the independent variable to the mediator, and then the mediator to the dependent variable. And there's also a line going from the independent variable to the dependent variable. So how do we refer to these sorts of terms? Well, this term here is a direct effect. And in mediation analysis, we want to test whether this is statistically significant or not, because it may have theoretical consequences. This is a key element in the mediation analysis, the direct effect. The other effect is an indirect effect, and it corresponds to the influence of the independent variable on the dependent variable through the mediator. That's what we call the indirect effect. And these terms are fairly self-evident. This line goes directly to the dependent variable, and this effect runs through another variable. It's indirect. And how we estimate the indirect effect is literally by multiplying the regression coefficient associated with this line and the regression coefficient associated with this line. Now, in a follow-up video, I show you in a very detailed way how to estimate all of these coefficients. For this video, I'm only setting the stage in terms of concepts and key terms. So this is the direct effect, and this is the indirect effect. And what I write here is, if the indirect effect is significant statistically, it necessarily implies that the difference between the total effect, which I showed you earlier, and the direct effect is significant statistically. So to repeat, if this effect, the indirect effect, A times B, is statistically significant, it necessarily implies that the direct effect, estimated here, and the total effect, estimated earlier, in a separate model, that total effect and the, to and the direct effect are statistically significantly different from each other. Now, in practice, what happens is, is that the direct effect shrinks. It's smaller than the total effect. And when the indirect effect is statistically significant, it implies that the total effect is statistically significantly larger than the direct effect. So the direct effect is accounting for less variance in the y variable than it did when the mediator was excluded from the model. Now I mention this here because some people feel like they have to test the difference between the total effect and the direct effect with a statistical analysis. You don't need to test the difference between the two because the indirect effect tells you whether the difference is significant or not in that if the indirect effect is statistically significant it necessarily implies that the direct effect is statistically significantly different from the total effect. Now to observe a statistically significant indirect effect necessarily implies that some level of mediation has occurred, but you do not know what type of mediation. Recall that I mentioned that there are two types of mediation, partial mediation and full mediation. And that's what you need to try to understand based on your results. What I write here is that if there's a significant direct effect, then what you have is partial mediation if you also have a statistically significant indirect effect. So if this term here from x to y is statistically significant and the indirect effect is statistically significant, you have 
a case of partial mediation. However, if the direct effect is not significant statistically, if this term is not significant statistically, and this term here is statistically significant, then you have full mediation. And so the direct effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable is indirect. It's operating through the mediator. There's no direct influence of x on y if this is not significant statistically. And I would say that in practice, there's a good chance you will see partial mediation or full mediation. Neither of them is rare. They're both quite common. So a recap. We conduct mediation analysis to understand whether the association between x and y can be partly or fully accounted for by another third variable, the mediator. And if we uncover that there's at least some indirect effect between x and y through m, then we have evidence for mediation. If the direct effect remains significant, then we have partial mediation. However, if the direct effect in comparison to the total effect is now statistically non-significant, we have evidence for full mediation. I encourage you to follow this video up by watching me show you an example step by step using all these key terms and these key concepts and the same visuals in order to truly understand the nature of a basic mediation analysis.